Actually, I... I saw him. I saw Zero when I got grabbed. I didn't see his face, though. Oh, so... All of our abductions were the same. How about you, Seven? Did the same happen to you? Yeah, well... Mine was just like the rest of yours. Talking won't solve anything! It can't help us find our way out of here! Very well, then. There's only one way for us to proceed. I'm telling you now, there is no way in hell that I'm going into door five. I want to go through door five, too. Junpei's bracelet is number five, right? If we are going to add Junpei, then we must subtract five from the rest of us. I don't wish to toot my own horn, but my auditory senses are considerably more advanced than those of most humans. By listening to the sound of footsteps and breathing, as well as sound echoing off the environment, I can locate most objects. What the hell is wrong with me? Oh, yeah, I guess I didn't tell you, huh? I told the rest of them before we ran into you on the stairs. I told them I couldn't remember a damn thing from before I woke up. I was just putting one of those plates in there. It ought to keep the door from locking again. Ah, why would you want to come back here? I might like to play a little piano. That's a lie. Junpei and his companions ran out of the casino and into a large open room. A room, in fact, that they had been in once before. There was little to surprise them here. They already knew what their next step had to be. This way! The iron gates still stood in place, locked tight, blocking the stairway. And right in the center of it... The keyhole with the Venus symbol. The Venus key should work here. Wasting no time, he pulled it out and shoved it into the keyhole. He turned it. With the distinctive sound of metal on metal, he felt the lock click open. It sounds like it did. All right, let's get this thing open. No problem. Let me help with this one. Junpei grabbed the handle on the left side, and Seven took the handle on the right. On Junpei's signal, they both pushed, and the gate creaked open. It sounds as though you have opened it. Yep. We should be able to reach C deck now, I imagine. Snake, uh, are you going to be all right? I mean, the stairs. I mean, yeah, that that is that is definitely a concern. I mean, I trip on the stairs all the time and I can see. So please, do not do yourself the embarrassment of underestimating me. I would be unlikely to trip even if I were running backwards. Uh, that's fair, I guess. Good to hear. Let's move. At Seven's words, they leapt onto the stairs and jogged quickly down them. In no time at all, they found themselves on sea deck. Everything looks okay here. We should check the next deck down, just in case. Uh, just in case of what? We're gonna find water. It's D. It's, uh, the D deck. Much like when we were in the main hall, it's gonna be flooded. When he reached the water, he called back up to Snake and Seven. See? Just what I thought. D-Deck is completely underwater. Just like the bottom of the central staircase. The surface of the water below was flat, like a mirror. I'm just glad the water level hasn't changed much. Back to the sea deck then. Yep. That was a waste. Now, how about we check out what's here? They began searching around and taking stock of what was on sea deck. There are two elevators over there, which means it's probably the same upstairs. Yeah, uh, I wonder if they connect to the uh, to the elevators in the main hall. There's a card reader between them, and another weird mark. Yeah, um, I think this is the sign for Mercury. If and this is this is my uh, Sailor Moon anime uh, trivia coming to the fore here. I'm pretty sure that's Mercury. And I say that because Sailor Mercury was actually my favorite scout, so. Hey, uh, check it out. It's the symbol for Lotus. Um. Okay. What? See? <laughs> it's got the woman symbol, and then it's got the devil horns, right? Aw, uh, that's not nice. You better hope to hell to high heaven that uh, Lotus never finds out that you said this. <laughs> Yeah, I see it. No two ways about it. That was a pretty good one, kid. Seven tousled Jinpei's hair in what he thought was to be a friendly manner. 
Jinpei feared his neck might break, even though it was clear Seven had kept his strength in check. Oh, whoa, would you watch it, man? Whoa, that hurts. You're gonna break my neck. What are you talking about? The human body ain't that weak. Maybe this will toughen you up, huh? <laughs> wow. If we were looking for a devil, we've got one right here. Um... If he's hurting you from just tousling your hair, imagine what he would do if he actually actively tried to hurt you, Junpei. And that that remark is uh, is probably a good way to get punched. Thankfully, Snake interrupted. After Junpei's observation, he'd gone over to examine the card reader. This is a Mercury symbol. The marks you mistook for horns are a stylized version of the wings and staff of Hermes. Oh, I didn't know that part, but I called the Mercury symbol. Wings and a staff. Huh. So then, she beats you with the staff until you die and go to heaven. Wow. Mercury was not violent. In fact, all of her attacks were actually rather defensive in nature. Sounds like Lotus, all right. Seven shook Junpei's head even more vigorously, and the younger man began to feel as though his brain was being jostled about inside of his skull. Seven, oh, that's too much. Oh, my head. Junpei's stomach began churning uncomfortably. Oh, I think I'm gonna puke. Unless we can activate this device, I doubt the elevator will function. Yeah, sounds about right. In other words, we gotta find a key card with a mercury symbol on it. Yeah. So I would assume. Let's forget the elevators for right now. I mean, it's not like we can use them, so makes sense. How about that hallway to the left? Whoa, there's a bunch of doors. There were a great many doors lining both sides of the hallway. They seemed to stretch on forever, and all three men suddenly felt very small. Ah, shit. We're not going to have enough time to check all these, are we? Nope. Considering we have, like, I think it's under six, like, just under six hours, maybe? Closer to five, perhaps? Either way, we don't have much time. Maybe we can come back here later. We should check out the other side. Let's head back. To the right of the stairs, another hallway stretched out, reaching deep into the bowels of the ship. To the right this time. After a few moments of moving briskly down the hallway, they, enter they emerged into an area roughly the same size and shape as the one at the top of the stairs. On the left side of the room were four French doors. Uh, there are doors here too. Uh, well, I guess it's just four this time. Let's open them up, starting with the closest one there. Okay, I'm on it. Junpei nodded and grabbed the one closest to him. He gave it a small tug and felt it move. Huh, it isn't locked. I'm going to open it. Yay! Thrilled to have found another unlocked door, he threw it open. It's a trap. Junpei didn't know what to make of what he saw. Oh. What? No, it's a, it's a room cl cluttered in beds. What the fuck? He simply stood, unable to speak. <laughs> Seven's eyes opened wide, and his mouth gaped. After a few long moments, Seven at last managed to speak. Hey, what... What is this place? It's so huge and empty. A massive room stretched out in front of them. More cavern than a room. Yeah, it definitely looks like this was just improvised. Its vastness was oppressive, and it bore down on Seven and Jinpei. It was not empty, however. The entire room was filled with lines upon lines of beds. They were simple things. More, little more than pipe and thin mattresses. Oh, there are beds everywhere. Is this a hospital? Seems like. The harsh scent in the air is reminiscent of antiseptic solution. I think so. There are shelves in the center of the room with medicine and surgical tools. Hey, look there. The four doors at the end. Yeah, uh, three of them are marked. One of them is not. Let's 
Three of them were emblazoned with large single-digit numbers made with thick red paint. The left door says three. The second door is blank, but the third has a seven. And the rightmost door is eight. There's no doubt. They're numbered doors. Yeah. And they've got the things beside them that we'll need to authenticate in order to open them. Uh, taking a second, because our root is four. No, sorry, our root is five, actually. Uh, our root is five, so we can't get into any of these doors. Hey, why is that door between three and seven blank? That is a very good question, actually. Does that mean anything? No point worrying about it right now. Let's see if these will open first. Good question. Yeah, good idea. The three of them threaded their way through the beds towards the back of the room. Upon reaching them, they proceed to investigate each door in turn, but to no avail. Yep, they're locked. Oh wow, even the uh, even the door that's not marked is locked. <sighs> yep, locked. Just like I thought. Naturally. After all, there are rules to the nonary game, and to allow these doors to open easily would violate those rules. And that we would end up like the ninth man. Unless we can authenticate ourselves with the red, the numbered doors will... Whoa, whoa, check this out. Suddenly, Seven spoke up, interrupting Snake. Look at the red. There's nothing on it. Wait, what? Huh? Don't you remember the red back at the main staircase? Oh my god, he's absolutely right. Uh, the, uh, the top panel should have a vacant written in, like, green font. Uh, I can't remember what the other, what it said when it was occupied. Uh, but that was in red, in red font. In the green font, it should be vacant. But and yet, there's nothing there. Uh, I wonder if it's broken, actually. If there wasn't anyone in it, it said vacant on a little screen, remember? Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. But this one... There's nothing. Right? You think it's broken? I think it is broken. Only one way to find out. No, nope. nothing. Junpei and the others put their hands on the panel, but nothing happened. The red refused to change. They tried pulling the lever, and still nothing. Soon, as they soon discovered, it wasn't the only red on. As they soon discovered, it wasn't only the red on door eight that seemed to be malfunctioning. Learn to read, Queen. How about the red on door seven? And door three? I didn't think all of them would be malfunctioning. Wow. What does it mean? Uh, that. Either they broke or someone sabotaged them. They've got to be broken. Man, that bastard. I didn't think Zero was the kind of guy who'd screw around with something like this. Yeah, it doesn't seem like he would either. Except if he did it on purpose, which I'm thinking he might have. Uh, but the question remains, why? Whoa, whoa. Zero's been prepared for everything so far, and you're saying he's going to make a mistake now? I'm with Junpei. This was purposeful. Well, that's the only thing I could think of. This thing ain't working at all. Hmm. While Junpei and Seven talked, Snake busied himself with examining the red. After a time, he lowered his hands and spoke. It seems as if some of the internal hardware has been removed. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that, that cinches it. It was sabotage. Internal hardware? That is what I said. Take a look at the underside of this red. If you please. The bottom. Jinpei obliged and bent over to look at the underside of the device. Huh. There's a thin slot here. I think it's a slot or something. Uh, probably electronic. Yeah. The other two reds are the same. Something's been removed from all three of them. I get it. So the reds aren't working because somebody pulled out their guts. Yep. Sounds like it. So, once again, we get back to the thought that... These were sabotaged somehow. And the question remains, who did it? I'm gonna guess zero. Which means he had to have done it for a reason. But as for what that reason is, I'm not entirely sure. So I assume. But why? And who? I mean, it really doesn't make sense. 
I have no idea. Why on earth would I know something like that? I mean, it's true. Unless he's he said that he's an engineer or something like that. Uh, makes no sense to ask him. Just then. They heard the sound of a door opening. Oh, what now? The three of them turned and saw... Akane. Oh, no. Junpei thought. It's... June! She stopped short, surprised to see them, and was very nearly bowled over by the rest of her companions who were coming through the door behind her. Ace! Santa! Clover! A and Lotus! Guess everyone's here. Yeah. Junpei and Seven were, for the moment, at a loss for words. What are you guys doing? Why are you... That's my line? Perhaps we should exchange information. Yeah, that's probably the smart idea. After a moment of silence and surprise, everyone suddenly began to talk, desperate to exchange information. They talked about the rooms they'd been through, and how they'd ended up in the same place. Of course, none of it was very useful information, but that hardly mattered. They were happy to simply see one another again. Although the level of cheer varied greatly from person to person, each one of them was wearing some manner of a smile. Almost as though they had already forgotten about the death of the ninth man. No, thought Junpei. Perhaps that wasn't it. Perhaps thoughts of his death were what drove them to smile at one another. Not in a morbid or hateful way, no. The ninth man had died, but they were still alive, and that was something to be happy about. A sort of simple, uncomplicated joy, Junpei thought. The joy of being alive. Still alive. He felt sorry for the ninth man, but more than anything, Junpei was just happy to be alive. And that's what we know. With that, Jinpei finished his own explanation. Well, this isn't good. Nope. If the red is inactive, we can't keep going. Yeah, which means we're going to have to backtrack. And hopefully find another way. What about that big hallway? Maybe there's somewhere in there we might be able to go. No, there's nothing there. The five of us had a quick look. Oh, wow, okay. There are plenty more hospital rooms, but nothing else. You mean all those doors are for hospital rooms? Yes. There are a number of individual rooms in addition to this large one. There was a door at the end of the hallway, but it was locked. It had one of those solar system mark things on it. Oh yeah? Which one? It was the Jupiter symbol. Okay. Jupiter. I wonder what it means. Uh, that Sky loves Sailor Moon? Confusion seemed to be the consensus. While we're asking what things mean, uh, what's the deal with this room? I mean, I thought this was a cruise ship, but I can't imagine a cruise ship would have a hospital like this. That's a very good question, actually. No one, not even Snake, appeared ready to offer an answer until Seven unexpectedly spoke up. Well, I figure it's probably a hospital ship. What makes you say that? Chances are it's the Gigantic. Explain. The Gigantic? Junpei looked at Seven, shocked by both by his knowledge and the apparent identity of their prison. He was not the only one. Yeah, I want to know who the fuck calls a ship the Gigantic. What is this Gigantic? Seven nodded to Lotus and began to speak. The Gigantic. She was a sister ship to the Titanic, built in the early 20th century. Actually, the Titanic had two sister ships, and they looked exactly the same. The Gigantic was said to be one of them. They intended to make her a passenger liner like the Titanic, but World War I began soon after the ship launched. The British Navy took her over and made her a hospital ship. At some point during the war, the Gigantic was damaged by a German mine in the Aegean Sea. Okay. She ran aground afterwards, so she didn't end up sunk. What happened to her after that? One theory going around is that a man named Lord Gordain bought her. Okay. Seemed like he'd been one of the few to survive the Titanic sinking. 
That trauma turned him into some kind of obsessive collector of all things related to the Titanic. Soon enough, the guy wanted the Titanic itself. Hmm, interesting. But it's under the sea, so... Or the Pacific Ocean, rather. So, uh, good luck with that. Which was impossible, of course. It's stuck at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, sorry, the Atlantic Ocean. But the Gigantic wasn't. And seeing as she was identical... I mean, yeah, I guess he settled. So you're saying this Lord Gordain bought this ship? Yeah, at least I think I am. Okay. That's impossible. No way we're in some boat that's almost a hundred years old. I mean, if it's maintained and well capped, I mean, I don't see why that's impossible. Pipe down, just pay attention. What, that's it? Well, have you got any proof? Proof? Proof that this ship is really the gigantic. Well, uh... I mean, if you think about it, it's got... It's got a giant hospital room like this one, as well as other hospital rooms that are littered throughout the ship. It looks like it's something that was created more to be a cruise liner than it was a hospital, and it seems like it was makeshift. It became a makeshift hospital, as it were. If it's the gigantic, then it would make sense why this happened. So really jumping to the conclusion that it's potentially the gigantic that makes sense to me i don't see why it's such an absurd idea that being said what i do find that's interesting is that seven knows so much about this i mean he's he's got amnesia uh which makes it odd that he knows like all of these things like he knew how to he knew how to play baccarat he uh he understood what mahjong was uh or mahjong sorry uh, he knew what the sound of a classroom bell was. That being said, uh, I do remember there was an episode of Gargoyles that I, that I watched when I was a kid where one of the characters, Alicia, ended up with amnesia. Uh, I don't remember the circumstances that caused her to, am to have amnesia, but I do remember she ended up encountering a couple of nice people that helped her and one of the things they ma they marveled at was the fact that the only thing she couldn't remember was anything to do with her life she knew history she knew geography she knew all kinds of other knowledge that she would have gained throughout like her experiences and whatnot but it was her life that she didn't remember so i'm wondering if that has something to do with seven I mean, it would certainly explain why he's such a knowledgeable guy, yet he can't recall his own memories. This ship's got stuff that's like the Titanic and a hospital ship. So, I just figured... Yeah, like I said, he just put two and two together. What's the problem with that? Oh, for goodness. Don't tell me that's your only reason. No, I I've got more. Oh, yeah? Like? Well, uh... I mean... <laughs> he, he doesn't have more. Seven looked around desperately, doing anything to avoid meeting Lotus's piercing stare. He scratched his head for a moment, then gave up. Finally, he opened his mouth. I don't know. Lotus sighed and shook her head. <sighs> I guess your memory isn't back yet, is it? Yeah. Sorry about that. Then, almost as if to save Seven from further embarrassment... A bell began to ring from far away. Oh, a bell. It sounds like the clock in the main stairway. Junpei counted each chime carefully. Ten, eleven, twelve. Uh, twelve. It's midnight. Yeah, which means we only have five more hours. No, six more hours. Then we've still got six hours left, right? Let's get going. We gotta find the missing parts for the Reds. What do you mean, find? How on earth do you propose we do that? We've looked everywhere in this room. They had been examining the room as they talked. But we haven't found anything. Right. That only leaves one place to look. One? Uh, well, not just one. Oh? Oh, you're talking about the other rooms on this floor. Uh-huh. Uh, wait. Don't tell me you mean we need to search all of the other rooms. 
Well, you already checked some of them out before you came here, right? We each checked a single room, so five rooms in total. All right, then. That's five rooms we don't have to search. Okay. <sighs> we just have to split up the rest between the eight of us. Okay. If each of us can do six rooms apiece, we'll have the other 48 rooms cleared in no time. Wait, there are 48 rooms? Plus five. That would make 53. How do you know that there's 53 rooms in here? There are 48 other rooms. Lotus did not seem excited by the prospect. Seven fidgeted nervously before responding. Uh, maybe? Yeah, he definitely knows more than he's letting on. <sighs> After some discussion, the eight of them decided which rooms to begin with and in what order they would go. Junpei was chosen to search the rooms on the starboard side, moving from fore to aft. All right, so everyone knows which area they're searching? Yeah. Yes! They also determined when they would return to report their findings. The next time the clock sounded the time. When it did, they would meet back in the large central room full of beds. We'll all meet up when the clock goes off again. Ah, uh, how about in that room with all the beds? Sounds like a good idea. I mean, everybody knows it. Yeah, sounds straightforward enough. If, during their search, any of them found were to locate the missing components, they were to yell for the others. I'll shout if I find any of the components we need. I hope we can find them within the time limit. Yeah, me too. If the strategy failed, they'd return to discuss their options later. If we can't, then we'll just have to come up with another plan. Yeah. Right. Then let's do this. The details decided. They left to begin searching. Out into the hallway they went, each to the rooms they'd been assigned. However, from far away, Junpei heard the ring, the bell ring. It did so only once. It was 1 a.m. It's one. I better get back to the others. Okay. He jogged through the entrance of the large hospital room to find six of the others already there. Huh? Ace, Santa, Clover, June, Seven, and Lotus. Hey, where's Snake? How come Snake's not here? They had gathered in front of door number eight. Or perhaps, to be accurate, they had gathered in front of the red next to door number eight. What are they doing over there? That's a very good question, in fact. Had one of them found the missing piece? What happened, guys? It was June who answered him. Jumpy, look! She was pointing at the red. He pushed through the others until he stood in front of it. Oh! Immediately he knew what she had meant. Yeah, someone fixed it! Vacant? Junpei sighed. <sighs> Come on, guys. Who was it? I thought we were supposed to yell if we found it. That's a very good point. Well... Junpei wondered why she was hesitating. The others looked as confused as June, but kept their mouths shut. What the hell? What is up with you guys? They all knew something he didn't, and Junpei wasn't about to leave things that way. I will say one thing about this game. The voice acting is actually on point. In a lot of these games, you, you can kind of tell when someone's just kind of acting, or like whether they're acting too little or too much. These reactions are actually really spot on, and I love it. Finally, Lotus frowned and spoke. Well, that's the thing. We don't know. You don't know? When I got back, it was already like this. There was no one else here. That means I was the first one back, but... The missing parts were already back in the red. So, someone had to have beaten Lotus back here to fix the red. What? Let me see. 
Junpei looked at the bottom of the red again, just to make sure. The slot that had been opened in the bottom was now covered with metal. You're right. It's in there. What about the other two? They're the same. Let me take a look. Junpei quickly examined the other two boxes. It's just as you said. Satisfied that they were also repaired, but still very confused, he returned to the others. All right, I, I just want to be sure here. Nobody has any idea what the hell happened here, right? Correct. None. Ace and June nodded silently. Seven raised his hands as if to say, not me. And Santa just shrugged. <sighs> yeah, she's probably worried about her brother because he's not here. Only Clover lowered her head and did nothing. Huh. Wait a minute. That was when he noticed. Where's Snake? Yep, there we go. Junpei swept his eyes across the room for a second time. But Snake was nowhere to be seen. Does that mean that he found them? I mean, maybe. But at the same time, how would he have been able to fix them? I've no idea. There's nothing to suggest it. But nothing to suggest he didn't either. Uh... That being said, if he fixed it, it's not like he would have been able to do anything. So chances are he would have either shouted out, like we agreed, or he would have sat here and waited. And potentially claimed that it was already fixed when he got here. Uh, just like uh, Lotus is saying. So... Yeah, no. Uh, I would say the fact that he isn't here suggests that he didn't find them. Or, it, sorry, it doesn't suggest that he found them. But it does suggest something weird. And I'm, yeah, I, I've lost my tangent. I don't know. I don't suppose we'll know until we can ask him in person. Well, whatever he did or didn't do, he's pretty damn late. What the hell is he up to? Maybe he's lost. I mean, yeah, I mean, he he has really good hearing, so he can, uh, he can find his, uh, surroundings fairly easy, but if he's in a place that he, that is foreign and unfamiliar and he's by himself, that's not to say that he couldn't have wandered somewhere where the noise would have potentially disoriented him. So, yeah, that makes me worried a little bit. Yeah, well, that seems likely. Dude can't see. I don't know how he gets around in the first place. Clover raised her head. No! That's impossible! Suddenly, she was shouting. Yeah, my brother's blind, but he's got really great hearing! He can get around as well as anyone who can see! So he... he couldn't get lost! That's impossible! Clover had started to shake and the knuckles of her hands had gone white. She spun around, but before she did, Junpei noticed tears welling up in her eyes. I'm gonna go look for him! The words were barely out of her mouth when she began to run. Hey, uh, hold on, Clover! Wait! Junpei cried out to her, but she was too slow. But he was too slow, sorry. She kept going, and before anyone else could react, she was gone. Well, that didn't work. Nope. Good job, Junpei. Damn it. What should we do now? Well, the red is working now. Wow, you callous bitch. No, we're not leaving two people behind. We should go look for them. Oh, man, this ain't good. I mean, if you think about it, that's literally what we would want them to do for us. So. Oh, yes, what an excellent idea. We just wasted a bunch of time looking for some piece of electronic junk. Now let's waste some more by looking for a couple of idiots. Can we fucking drown you in a toilet somewhere, please? I mean, all we'd really need is to, like, hold up your hand to the door in order to activate it if we need to utilize the number three. I mean, we could totally keep the bracelet on you. It'd be totally fine. Then remain here if you feel you must, but there's no time. We've only five hours left. Exactly. Junpei and the others nodded to one another and took off at a run. It 
in front of the stairs that led to B deck, they decided to split up. Let's split up. All right, I'll take this direction. Then I shall look that way. I'll be over here. Let's see you all later. Soon, only two of them were left. Those two were Junpei and June, who had been a few steps behind the others. All right, we should go too. Yes, let's go. But where should we start? Let's see. Oh, okay, so I guess June's coming with me. That's fine. That works for me. Uh, let's let's go all the way back to the first class cabin. Oh, what about the first class cabin on B deck? Okay, let's go, Jumpy. They took off up the stairs at a run. Outside of the first class cabin, they found Clover. Oh. She was standing in front of the wall. She was staring at the meaningless point in the wall. Her eyes blank. What should Junpei do? Well, I mean, we're talking to her, because I want to check on her, see if she's okay, and reassure her that we're going to find her brother. Are you alright? He did his best to sound friendly, but Clover didn't respond. <laughs> Look, I know you're really worried, but... Um... He could think of no words to say that didn't sound hollow and fake. Junpei hesitated. Clover was so consumed by worry and fear that Junpei feared it would crush her. Her actions didn't surprise him. She had suddenly lost her brother, who she seemed to have been very close to. Alone. Okay. Lone? As in she's all alone? Her voice was thin and barely audible. Alone. Hmm? Hmm? I said leave me alone! Oh, okay. Or that. That's fine. I guess she doesn't want us to talk to her. Oops. Suddenly she was screaming. You're so annoying! Just go away and leave me alone! Go away, okay? Just go somewhere else! Stop bothering me! Jinpei was taken aback. Uh, um... Sudden anger and hate. June's eyes had gone wide with surprise as well. Why are you still here? Didn't you hear me? <sighs> um, okay. I guess we're leaving. Fine, forget it. If you aren't gonna leave, then I'll just... All right, let's go, June. Uh, yeah. They turned and left Clover. <laughs> as they did, Junpei glanced back over his shoulder to see Clover wiping tears from her face. Okay, well, that didn't go well. Clover had driven home the misery of their situation, but Junpei told himself that getting depressed would get him nowhere but depressed. <sighs> we really need to find Snake, for Clover's sake. Yeah, yeah we do. He did his best to push away the misery and depression, and forced a smile. So, uh, where do you think we should go next? Uh, well, we're right here, so we might as well check out the casino. How about the casino? Let's go take a look. They turned and headed off down the hallway to their right at a jog. Before they knew it, they were there. So was Lotus. She was leaning against the wall, examining her nails. Hey, what do you think you're doing? She glanced up at him, unimpressed. Isn't it obvious? I'm looking for Snake. Are you gonna find him underneath your fingernails, you bitch? Get to looking! I'm just not seeing it. Really? Maybe you need to look harder. Maybe you need to start actually looking. I don't think that's the problem. Yep. Jinpei's with me here. Oh, by the way, I've got a proposal for you two. Uh, I don't think I want to. Oh, okay, I get the choice here. I don't think I want to, but you know what? We're going to because, uh, yeah. No, I, I want to I wanna be on the same page and know what she's up to. What is it? Well, I don't like to beat around the bush, so I'll get right to it. Okay. Why don't we team up? Team up? Yeah. What? You need me to explain it to you? I'm saying, why don't we go through a numbered door? Even if we wanted to, that's impossible. I mean, she's kind of right, because 8 plus 6 plus 5. Okay, so eight, uh, 5 and 6 is 11, plus 8 is 19. So that makes 
one and nine is ten, and then one and zero is one. So that's our root. Our root is one. So uh, we wouldn't be able to. Uh, yeah, we wouldn't be able to get into the door. We would we would have to find somebody else to help us get through one of the doors. So yeah, there's 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 no point. And anyways, we're all working together. Why would we want to split off into separate teams? What? Jumpy's bracelet number is five, mine is six, and yours is eight. Our digital root would be one. So that's, yeah, yeah, yep. See, I got it right. I got it right. But there's no number one door in the large hospital room. Exactly. We'd have to look elsewhere for that door, or include other people. But which again seems counterintuitive because we are all trying to work together to survive at this point. The only doors there are three, seven, and eight. Then we add another person. Huh? Who? What? Isn't that easy? Seven. Oh, if we add seven, five plus six plus eight plus seven equals 26. And that makes eight. The digital root of 26, two plus six equals eight. Then the root of them could go through the number eight door. Oh, then the four of them could go through the number eight door. Okay, so that leaves Santa, Ace, and Clover by themselves. Uh, so three and four is seven. Plus one is five. So they wouldn't be able to get through any of the doors. No, wait. They're... Three and seven... Sorry, three and four is seven. One is eight. So they would still be able to get through the number eight door. But they'd have to wait for us to finish, I guess. And it makes no sense that both, both teams would go in through the same door. But... Wait a minute. What about the other four? Ace, Snake, Santa, and Clover. Well, why don't you add them up? That was simple enough. One plus two plus three plus four equals ten. Oh yeah, if you include Snake, that's also ten. Yeah. And one plus zero equals one. The digital root for those four would be one. That's right. And you know the number one door isn't in the big hospital room, right? Of course I know that. No! Are, are you saying you'd leave them behind? Sounds like it, yeah. Of course not. What kind of woman do you think I am? Okay, so tell me. Tell me exactly what you were saying. Uh, if we were to leave and they can't pass through any doors, what exactly does that mean exactly? Tell me. Tell me. Once we get off the ship, we could come back and rescue them, couldn't we? Uh, yeah, there's something wrong with that plan first and foremost uh first the only way to get off the ship is to find the number nine door we only add up to a root of eight even if we were to add ace to make that nine and that would make uh that would bring our total group to five which is the maximum that we would be able to um the fact of the matter is we have five hours left and we haven't even found the number nine door so who's to say that we're going to find it right away? Which means by the time we get back, chances are it's going to be too late. The The ship's going to be sunk and then Santa, Clover, and Snake are going to get screwed. So really, how exactly do you think we're going to pull off that magic trick? Then we wouldn't really be leaving them behind. Don't try to lie to us. I don't think you'd do anything of the sort. Really? Why do you think that? You remember, don't you? We have less than five hours left. Even if we manage to escape, there's no way we could come back to rescue them in less than five hours. See, June gets it. She understands. Well, you never know until you try. Uh... No, it's... logistically impossible. No, no, you're not thinking this through. Even if we brought Seven with us, we wouldn't be able to get off the ship. The four of us couldn't open door nine. It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a nine. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The digital route for the four of us would be eight, so we'd have to add ace to make nine. That's right. There you go. 
Unless we bring Ace too, we'll be stuck. Lotus scratched the back of Veneer. Oh. Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. Ooh, she doesn't seem to like Ace. You would expect that she would have been like, Okay, yeah, sure. So let's ask him. And then uh, the five of us will get off. And same plan. She would have that same argument. We'd go back in circles. Um, but no, she, she abandons it at the thought of having to bring Ace along. That is interesting. Unfortunate. That's all you have to say? She didn't sound particularly bothered by what Junpei said. Nor did she seem particularly surprised. Well, let's try and find another way, okay? A way to get out of here with all eight of us. That's impossible. Are you being serious? Uh, I believe she is, actually, Lotus. And you do know that only five people, at most, can go through one of the numbered doors, right? True, but... Okay, let's let's look at it this way. Um, if it was Lotus, June, Seven, Ace, and me. So again, that that's a root of nine. Let's take a look at the others, because the others would have been a root of ten altogether. We take out Ace on that equation, that leaves them with nine. So as soon as we get off the ship, they can pass through that same door. Which means we can go one after the other, right? So, technically, okay, so actually this plan is actually very viable now that I think about it. So, we would just split off into uh, two teams. One team of five, one team of three. And all of us all together would be able to get out. The number nine isn't going to be an exception to that. Regardless, at least three people will get left behind. Except those three people also add up to nine. So, again... Once the first team is gone, the other team can follow. I don't see a problem with this plan anymore. Huh? Yeah, I, I guess that makes sense. The moment he said it, Jinpei felt a chill run down his spine. No, wait just a second. You're skipping over a really big detail. Yes, what she said was true, but... How Lotus could remain cavalier about... So terrifying a prospect was beyond him. Yeah, she looks ready to dump anybody so long as uh, it will save her, uh, save her neck. Is that really okay? That means three people will die in the end. Are you okay with that? Seems like she is, yeah. But again, going from the math, those three people should be safe. That's, that's just... Lotus's forehead furrowed. You think I could have a moment alone? There are some things I need to think about. Okay, I guess? Jinpei and June turned and began walking away from Lotus. That didn't turn out to be a very pleasant conversation. No, it didn't. Yeah. Jinpei's heart felt heavy and his steps sluggish. But he told himself pessimism would get them nowhere. Well, regardless. So he forced himself to smile and turned to June. Let's just focus on finding Snake for now, okay? Yeah, that's... The, the what-if scenarios can wait until we're all together again. Yes, you're right. We can think about those other things later. Yeah. Junpei nodded. Alright, where should we go next? Okay, so we've been to the first class cabin. That's where we left uh, Clover. Let's go to the hallway with all the rooms. Let's go back downstairs and check out that hallway with all the doors. Together, they ran down the stairs. Oh, it's Ace. Ahead of them, farther down the hallway, they spotted Ace. Hey, Snake, where are you? Answer me if you're there. What should Junpei do? Yeah, let's 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 talk to Ace. Let's go. I mean, we've talked to everybody else. We might as well. With June in tow, Jinpei jogged up to uh, to Ace. Hearing their footsteps, he turned to greet them. Ah, hello there. Snake is. Well, that's obvious, isn't it? I assume you haven't found him yet. Nope. Yeah, doesn't seem like you're having any luck either. I really wonder where he could have gone. Well, wherever he's disappeared to. We must find him as quickly as we can. 
for Clover's sake. Yeah. Right. June's face looked kind of enraptured. By the way, um, do you think Clover and Snake are really siblings? Uh, why would you say that? Yeah, that's that's kind of a good question, Junpei. Why would you say that? The question seemed somehow odd to Junpei. Why? <laughs> well, it's obvious, isn't it? They don't look alike at all. I mean, yeah, that's true, but there are siblings who don't look alike to each other. In fact, there are kids who don't look like their parents and vice versa. So, I don't think that's reason alone is enough to dissuade them. And anyways, there's also there's also such things like adoption. Or that kind of thing. How they could even be step-siblings. You don't know. Ace looked at him for a moment and then spoke. Yes, you know, now that you mention it, they don't. Now that you mention it? Still, there are a great many siblings who do not look like one another. There you go. It certainly isn't rare. Shinpei wasn't sure why, or even if he was seeing what he thought he was. But he could have sworn that Ace's face tightened as he spoke. Ooh. So, uh, Jinpei seems to have touched a nerve there. At any rate, we really must find Snake as soon as possible. The clock is ticking. We really can't afford to waste any time. <sighs> Very well. Let's get back to the search, shall we? You can leave this area to me. All right. Let's go, Jumpy. At June's urging, they left. They found themselves back at the stairs, but Jinpei's mind was in turmoil. Something about that was... I'll think on it later. I mean, the only thing that strikes me as weirder of that conversation is how his face tightened. But that could be a whole slew of reasons why he did that, so... Yeah, we'll think on it later. Like Ace said, finding Snake is our top priority. Junpei did his best to clear his mind. Alright, where should we go next? Uh, well, I think we've gone everywhere else, so let's go back to the uh, large hospital room. Why don't we go back to the big hospital room? Okay, let's go then. They turned and headed back towards the large hospital room. Hey, wait, that's... Oh, another slacker. On their way to the large hospital room, Junpei and June noticed Santa standing next to the number three door. Santa? Junpei paused. What should Junpei do? We're talking to him. Because, again, we've talked to everybody else, so we might as well. Junpei and June walked up to Santa. What are you doing? What? You can't tell? I'm checking out the red. Why? Is there something bothering you? What? It's not bothering you? Huh? If you're talking about how they were repaired, yeah, no, that is, that is pretty sus. But I'm pretty sure that Zero is the one who did it. This... the guts of this red. Why wouldn't you wonder who the hell put it back in here? Yeah, that's true. Well, I'm curious too, but... Who do you think did it? Santa's eyes narrowed as he looked at June. She shook her head. I don't know. Well, what about you, Junpei? Who do you think fixed this thing for us? Zero. I think it was probably Zero. Why? Isn't that obvious? He's the guy who set this whole thing up. You don't think that should mean the opposite? Seems to me like that means he didn't do it. Oh, really? I mean, who do you think took that stuff out in the first place? I mean, zero, probably. Probably zero. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Then why the hell would he put him back in after he'd taken them out himself? Because he doesn't want the game to end. I mean... Do you if 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 the game ended because he took he sabotaged the devices and we couldn't progress any further, that's not a very entertaining game. It seems to me that he's the one who did it. So and he did it to keep the game rolling. It just doesn't make sense. Why do all that work? Huh. And anyways, it's not really a lot of work if you know what you're doing. Uh it looks like only one piece was really missing from the device. So, if you knew what you were doing, it would take, like, maybe five minutes tops to, like, reinsert the missing piece. Especially if you're the one who removed it in the first place. So, it stands to reason that it's not really much work at all. 
You just have to wait until everybody's out of the room and then fix it before everybody returns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. So what happened then? Who put that stuff back in the ranks? Junpei furrowed his brow. So, in other words, one of us is the person who fixed the red. Santa grinned. Bingo! We have a winner! But if that's true, then the person who did it doesn't want the rest of us to know that they fixed it. Yeah. But why? Uh, they want to keep that information close to them. Uh, we would assume that they were working for Zero, perhaps. I still think it's Zero who did it, but I'm trying to keep an open mind here. If it was one of us, then those are the reasons that, uh, that I can see them doing it for. No idea. Maybe if they can clean on that, it means we'd find out something else. Something bad. Like, for example, they were working with Zero, and they're partially the reason why we're even here. Something bad? Dunno. But whatever it is, it's gotta be worth hiding. Hmm. Of course, it could have something to do with Snake's disappearance. Yeah, that's also true. You think maybe they did something to Snake? Yeah. Oh. <sighs> Junpei stared at Santa. There was something about him that made Junpei, Junpei worry. At first, He'd assumed that the other man was terribly clever, wasn't terribly clever, but Junpei was beginning to think he would need to reevaluate that assessment. Yeah, no, he's definitely clever, and I've been thinking that from the start. He's just not much of a team player. When, Jun when Santa spoke again, his voice was quiet. Look, if you trust anybody in this game, you're gonna lose. You've got to be careful. The person you trust the most could turn out to be the one who stabs you in the back. And with that depressing suggestion, he turned and quietly walked away. And that's that, I guess. <laughs> Jinpei and Chun looked at one another and smiled awkwardly. Where would they go next? I mean, we've been everywhere. We've been to the casino, the first class cabin, the hallway with all the rooms. So I guess we're finished searching. They looked everywhere they could think of, but Snake was nowhere to be found. That snake hasn't been anywhere we've searched. Lotus looked around at six frustrated faces and spoke. And we can't keep looking for him. Wherever he is, it's not here. We need to get moving. Junpei couldn't disagree with what she said. Snake seemed to have completely disappeared. There was no point in wasting any more time. The others seemed to be having similar thoughts, but they stayed silent. Finally, Seven spoke. We don't got a choice. Lotus is right. We're not going to find Snake. There's a problem, though. Oh? We've got to figure out who's going to go through which door. Yes, I have a proposal. She walked back and forth across the floor her heels clicking against the wood. I wonder if it's as selfish as her last proposal. Finally, she stopped. Why don't we decide on one person to sacrifice? Wow. Sacrifice? Well, perhaps that's a bit of a harsh word, but yes. You've all figured it out by now, haven't you? We can't all make it through those doors. If we split into two teams of four and three people respectively, then three people will be left behind. If we split into two teams of five and two people respectively, then two people will be left behind. Well, we wouldn't be able to split into two teams of five and two people because two people wouldn't be able to... Oh, yeah, no, I see what you're saying. But if we split into two groups of three and leave one person out, then only one person will be left behind. Leaving behind three people with two teams of four and three? I mean, I really hate to say it, but I think she's actually right. It wasn't pleasant, but she was right. There wasn't any way that the numbers worked out. If one group was four, the other group would always have a digital route that didn't match a door. 
When Seven spoke, his voice was strained. Then... You're saying we gotta decide who's gonna stay behind? Yes, we do. Given our circumstances, it's logically and morally the best solution. If the other six are to survive, then one person has to sacrifice themselves. No! That's too cruel! What's so cruel about it? To... to just sacrifice someone like that? Then what's your plan? Maybe we should sacrifice two people instead of just one. That's not what I meant! We shouldn't sacrifice anyone! I, I told you, that's impossible. Wake up! Whoa, whoa, calm down, you two. Santa stepped between Lotus and June. Look, what Lotus is trying to say is, you should aim to bring the greatest amount of happiness to the greatest amount of people, right? Exactly. That's how democracy works. I mean, yeah, that's true. She's not wrong about that, but democracy tends to go with, uh, well, actually, yeah, no, she's not wrong. It's when you look at it that way in this circumstance, it's kind of cruel. But at the same time, she's not wrong. And for that reason, I think the only fair way to decide who will be sacrificed is through a vote. What do you think? No, that's terrible. I'm not asking you. Shut up. Wow. Don't, don't, don't be mean to June. June's just voicing her opinion. What about you, Santa? Me? Well, I agree, I guess. All right, that's one vote for. Counting mine, that's two. Seven. I can't say I agree with you, but we don't exactly have a choice. If we don't do something, we're all gonna die. Oh, glad to see you get it. If I can get one more vote, then it's decided. What about you, Clover? Clover had moved away from the group and was sitting on one of the beds. Her whole body drooped. Junpei didn't know if she'd even heard Lotus's proposal. Hey, Clover. Lotus walked over to Clover and gently laid a hand on her shoulder. Your brother has to be behind one of the numbered doors. What? No, he doesn't! Because if he went behind the, one of the doors, he's dead! Much like the ninth man, you need at least three people to open the door. What the fuck are you talking about? What is your aim, bitch? We've searched everywhere, but we didn't find him. Doesn't that mean he has to have gone through one of them somehow? You're just basically playing on her emotions so that she votes with you, you fucking bitch. Uh -huh. Clover slowly lifted her face. Let's go look for him together, okay? If we sacrifice one person, then we can go look for him. You agree with me, right? Okay. Ah, uh, of course. And it works because she's super worried about her brother. Clover nodded once. <laughs> the motion carries. Lotus spun around and walked towards Junpei. Now, let's start a vote to... That won't be necessary. Ace had barely spoken for Lotus's entire speech, and everyone jumped a little. It's interesting that she, well, obviously June voiced her opinion, but uh, it's interesting that Lotus didn't ask Jinpei or Ace. And I'm assuming it's because she felt that they would disagree with her. Six pairs of eyes turned to look at him. He didn't seem to notice or even care. I will stay. That should solve our problem, yes? Uh. 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 What are you saying? He's saying he wants to stay behind so that we can all go through the doors. I mean, he's not exactly wrong, but at the same time... No! You can't do that! That won't solve anything! June's voice shook, and she looked around desperately for someone to agree with her. A simply looked at her. June, I'm afraid you may have misunderstood me. I said I would stay, but I never said I would sacrifice myself. Huh? I trust you. Each and every one of you. I believe you'll come back for me. Uh, I, uh, I mean, that's, that's pretty big of him. I'm not 100% sure I believe him, mind you. But, yeah, no, he's, if, if it is true. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's optimistic, and then there's just nuts. Um, what Seven said. Those doors only go one way. You go in, you don't come out. Meaning we couldn't come back for you even if we wanted to. Which we want to. There are some of us, Lotus, who don't. But 
like, yeah, we wouldn't be able to come back. If we go through them, you won't be able to return, correct? Yeah. True, but that will not be the case once you've escaped from the ship. What? Please, I beg you. Once you've escaped, come back and rescue me. Ideally, within the time limit Zero has given us. But once again, there's no guarantee that we would be able to find him. Well, to find a way out within the time limit, let alone have enough time to come back. No, that's ridiculous. There's no way we could get back in time. Finally, Jinpei could hold his tongue no longer. We've only got five hours left. We don't even know where the hell we are. How on earth are we going to find someone to come and rescue you? Then, perhaps you would prefer to stay instead of me? Or perhaps you would be willing to leave June behind? I mean, he has a point. It's the same problem either way. Someone has to stay behind for everyone else to progress. Ace's voice was dignified and without a hint of cruelty or malice. Jinpei had no rebuttal. You see, there's no other choice. Then I see we've come to our conclusion. Go on. Don't worry yourselves about me. Go, quickly. Jinpei stood frozen by indecision, unable to move. Uh. <laughs> June bit her lips so hard that Jinpei was feared she would break the skin. Santa stood against the wall, calm and aloof. Seven tore his beanie from his head and turned it over anxiously in his hands. Only Clover stared at Ace, with an expression Junpei wasn't able to decipher. Lotus's attitude, however, was different from the others. Hmm. Let's accept his kind offer, then. Uh, of course she would be happy. She smiled, her eyes bright. Ace answered with a smile of his own. Good. I think this is the best for me. Perhaps I'll be able to take a nap. It may be my age, but I get tired so easily these days. As he spoke, Ace lowered himself down to the floor next to one of the beds. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. From somewhere deep in the ship, Junpei suddenly heard the screech of metal on metal. It was almost as if the ship were screaming. Would it really hold until their time limit was up? Already, D-Deck was flooded. In the sudden silence, the only sound was the sad metal wail of the ship. Unsurprisingly, it was Lotus who spoke first. Well, what are you waiting for? We're wasting time. Why don't we hurry it up? As if a spell had been broken, the others all began to talk at once. You're right. We should get going. That's all we can do right now. Seven! Seriously. Honestly, I was getting kind of sick of listening to you guys talk. You too, Santa? I... I have to find my brother. W wait All of you! Let's just calm down and think about this. I mean, girl is tenacious. You, you gotta give it to her. There has to be a way to get everyone out. There has to be! Right, Jumpy? Say something! Yeah, let's think. There's gotta be another way. His words sounded hollow and fake. Fine! Forget about it! I'll figure it out on my own! She spun around and ran toward Ace. He had slumped down next to the bed when June grabbed his arm and pulled. Ace! Come on, Ace! Please stand up! You can't give up yet! We just have to sit down together and think about this! We'll figure out a way that we can all get out of here! Then it happened. <sighs> oh. Ace fell forward. Shit, uh... Well, we know June fell forward because she had some sort of fever. But, uh, I wonder if Ace is suffering the same thing. He slumped over onto the wooden floor. His body folded in half like a boxer out cold. Ace! June cried out and dropped to her knees beside him. She put her arms around his neck and did her best to lift him up. What happened? Ace! Say something! She shook him, frantically. His eyes fluttered open. 
I'm all right. His voice was weak and slightly slurred. How are you all right? This. He held out his left arm and slowly opened his hand. Oh. A syringe? Oh, he drugged himself. Shit. In it was a syringe and a small vial. The vial was empty. It had only recently been emptied. A few drops clung to the sides. There was a label taped to the side of the container. It read, Soporil Beta. Soporil Beta? Soporil Beta? What does this do? Did, did you use this? Yes. That is exactly what that means. Yes. It's just... anesthetic. I'll be... fine. Anesthetic? I found it earlier. While we were searching the... hospital rooms. I thought it might be useful... later. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be... using it on... myself. Okay, so, yeah, I guess, I guess he didn't trust us as much as he claimed he did. Uh, cause he could easily use that to subdue one of us. Or he, uh, but I think in this case he might have used it probably to stop us from, uh, from arguing over who would stay behind or trying to get him to come with us. But if in the event that we didn't make it back in time, if the ship sank, he wouldn't feel it. He he would drown, but he would be unconscious. Why did you do this? Didn't I tell you? I'd like to take a nap. I really am very tired. Jinpei knew that wasn't why he'd done it. Ace had injected himself with the anesthetic to forestall Jinpei and June's attempts to bring him along. If he couldn't move, there was nothing they could do. He'd injected himself so that they would be forced to leave him behind. Ace! Hmm? Is there something you want to say? I'd just like to sleep a little. Could you keep it down? No! Don't, Ace! Don't fall asleep! <coughs> I mean, I don't think he's going to be able to keep himself awake with that shit in his in his veins, June. I think that's a lost cause. Uh, you feel warm. So comfortable. I think I'll have a nice dream. Ace's eyelids drooped further and further. Almost as though he were dying. Ace! Ace! She shook his shoulder again and again. But this time he didn't respond. <sighs> Only the gentle rising and falling of his chest told them he was alive. Jinpei was relieved to see he was, in fact, still breathing. Uh, let's get him up on a bed. He lifted Ace up off the floor and laid him on the bed he'd been leaning against. When Jupe turned around, Lotus gave him a look of pity. Well, we really don't have a choice now. We can't let his sacrifice go to waste. Can you, like, stop using that word, please? I'd really appreciate it. Right? <sighs> like you even mean that. No. Mm. You say something? Yeah, like you even mean that. No, nothing. Coward. It felt wrong, but he had to agree. Then suddenly, Santa spoke. Yeah, but we're not done choosing yet, are we? Nope. Huh? What do you mean? We still have to choose which door we're going through. Well, we haven't decided who's going in what door. Ah, oh, yes. Yes, that's true. <sighs> Enough of this screwing around. Let's decide. You first, Lotus. Which door do you want? I, um... I want door number eight. It's the same number as my bracelet number. Got it. You're eight. Your next seven. Which one do you want? I'll take seven. I can't get along with that old lady. Oh! What? What did you just say? He called you an old lady. 
her face distorted by rage, Lotus took a step forward toward Seven. He threw up his hands and made a face like a child caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Who, me? I, I didn't say nothing. Yeah, you did. St stick with your convictions. Oh, you're gonna get it next time. She shot him a glare that would have melted that would have melted steel, then turned and stalked off. All right, who's next? Santa's gaze moved across the three people left. Finally, they stopped on Junpei. Junpei, which door do you want? At last, Junpei's mind was already made up. No, it fucking isn't. You're making me choose, game. If you're gonna, if you're gonna make me choose, at least. Uh, insinuate that Jinpei has to think about it first. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, door eight and seven are picked, so I'm gonna go with door three. I wanna go through door number three. Nope, you can't. Uh, excuse you? Huh? Why? Because it's impossible. If we split ourselves into three and three, then we give up on going through door three. Why? Bracelet numbers for the six of us are three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are two combinations that can go through door three with three people. Three, four, five, or six, seven, eight. That's it. Of course, two teams can't go through the same door. I see. That means one team would get left behind. Yeah. Okay. That's right. That doesn't happen if we go through door seven or eight. No, they're fine. We've got three options. Santa began to explain. Option A. Have three, five, and eight go through door seven. And four, six, seven go through door eight. Option B. Four, five, and seven go through seven. And three, six, and eight go through eight. Option C. Three, six, and seven go through seven. And four, five, and eight, get eight. Those are the only three options. That's it. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. At least if we want to get all six of us out of here. Yeah, at which point then we're playing around and we're leaving other people behind, I guess. Wait. That was when Junpei realized. Plan A divided into two teams. Three, five, and eight. And four, six, and seven. Plan B divided into two teams. Four, five, and seven, and three, six, and eight. Plan C divided into two teams. Three, six, seven, and four, five, eight. Five and six are constantly being separated. I can't go with uh, June. Jinpei and June are cannot be on the same team if we want to go, if we're going to go with team seven and eight. But that means... There was one thing they had in common. Five and six can never be on the same team. Yeah. If we want all six of us to go through a door, then June and I can't go into the same one. Exactly. She's not going to take that well. Junpei and June had been friends since they were kids. He trusted her more than anyone else on the ship. If he chose seven or eight, he'd be taken away from her. Was that something he was prepared to do? <sighs> Have you molded over enough, or do you need more time? Anyway, that's the deal, so think it over. You've got two choices, seven or eight. You can't choose three. If you choose three, you're gonna be leaving three people behind to die. So what are you gonna do? Seven or eight? Time to choose. Jinpei thought hard. After thinking it over, his conclusion was... Yeah, I could still take the risk and go and choose door three, but um, yeah, no, I'm not gonna do that to the rest of them. That'd be mean. Uh, solely because I want to keep an eye on her, I'm gonna choose door eight. Okay, okay, fine. All right, I choose door eight. Okay, eight it is. Yeah. All right then. That means June's got to go through seven. Yep. Huh? Why? Uh, she hasn't figured it out. June's face was blank and confused. Santa muttered to himself and turned to Junpei. Ugh, Junpei, you figured it out, right? Can you explain it to her? 
Okay, so, June, if we want all six of us to go through a door... Junpei chose his words carefully. When Junpei finally finished, June looked as though she was about to cry. Yep. Oh no! You're saying we aren't going to see each other again for a long time. Well, maybe not so much a long time. Could be a short time. I mean, it didn't take long for us to meet again when we passed through doors five and four, right? Uh. Junpei felt just as June did. He wanted to be at her side through whatever trials they were preparing to face. But he knew that if they were to survive, he had to swallow his feelings. In order for the six of them to move forward, he and June had to be separated. He looked at June. He was scared to lose her, but he swallowed, steeled his resolve, and did his best to smile. Hey, come on. You're making it sound like we're never going to see each other again. We gotta split up, but only for a while. This is just like when we went into the four and five doors, remember? We got split up then too, but we all met back up. I'll bet seven and eight are just like that. You mean they're connected somewhere? Probably, yeah. I mean, if you think about it, how are we going to progress if we run into any more doors and we're in separate sides? Like, we can't continue the game, and then that would be a very boring experience for Zero. So they've got to be connected somewhere. Yeah, probably. Probably? Yeah, I mean, that being said, there are no guarantees. Okay, if I, if I said that there was and then they and then there turned out not to be, come on, you would be like, Junpei is a fucking liar. She didn't sound very hopeful. But it was Seven that interjected. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to connect somewhere. Why? Wh what makes you think so? If they don't, then neither team can get through door nine. Exactly. There you go. In other words, the game would end right here. Zero's been on top of the shit so far. I don't think he'd blow it now. I'm damn sure that son of a bitch wants to have his fun as long as possible. Exactly. He's not going to end this game until we get through the nine door. June said nothing. Hmm. The tears were gone, but her eyes were still sad as they looked at Junpei. He met them, and with what reassurance he could manage, laid his hand gently on her shoulder. Everything's going to be fine. We're gonna see each other again, I promise. June bit her lip and gave him an almost imperceptible nod. Yes, promise? Her voice was barely above a whisper. Santa's voice shattered the moment. <sighs> you guys are done, right? Oh, go fuck off. He stretched and continued. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Clover and I will both go into separate groups. I figure I'll take seven and Clover can take eight. Any problems with that, Clover? Clover looked away and was silent for a moment. Whatever. It was more of a dismissal than an agreement, but Santa didn't seem to care. All right, we're ready to go then. Let's move. At Santa's command, the group split and headed for their respective doors. Santa, Seven, and June walked towards door seven, while Clover, Lotus, and Junpei headed for door eight. For a long moment, they stood in front of the door. Then Lotus laid her hand against her chest and turned to Junpei and Clover. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Then shall we go? It's open. A narrow hallway stretched out before them. Okay. Hurry! Lotus and Clover leapt through the door. The moment they did, their bracelets beeped. The detonators in the bracelets had activated. Junpei stepped forward to follow them. But as he was about to step over the threshold, he stopped. <sighs> he looked to his left. Toward door seven. June stood there, a mirror image of Junpei. She turned and looked toward him. Their eyes met. June. Jumpy. 
They nodded. Their farewell took almost one and a half seconds. What the hell are you doing? Then someone took hold of Jinpei's arm and hauled him bodily through the door. He heard the sound of numbered door of the numbered door slam shut behind him. His bracelet gave a cold electronic beep. Eighty one seconds left. Hurry! Lotus snapped at him and ran to the dead. Yeah. Junpei and Clover followed her as fast as they could. <sighs> it stopped. With a shaking hand, she wiped a few beads of sweat from her forehead. Clover, however, was calm. Aloof, perhaps. Pointless. She muttered to herself without emotion and began to walk down the hallway leaving behind a confused Junpei and Lotus. Lotus watched the girls receding back with a mix of frustration and curiosity. What an unpleasant girl. I bet she's not very popular with the boys. Hey, uh, Lotus, not everyone cares about that kind of shit, okay? So maybe keep your fucking comments to yourself. Her sarcasm seemed a little more biting than was perhaps necessary, but she sighed and started after the younger girl. Hmm, maybe pairing these two together was a mistake. Maybe. Too late now. I better catch up to them. After taking a moment to catch his breath, Junpei followed. Ah, oh, it's a dead end. The hallway made of number of turns before at last coming to a dead end. There's a door on the left, though. For a few minutes, they stood in front of the door, examining it. Above the door was a plate with the word laboratory engraved on it. A laboratory? Huh. Oh, that doesn't sound very pleasant. No. I don't like the look of this place. I mean, I kind of don't either, but at the same time, we don't really have a choice of where we're going to go, so... Me either. But there aren't any other doors. It's not like we have a lot of choices. Jinpei. Huh? Please. You first. Oh, fuck off! Junpei suspected her politeness was motivated by something other than respect. Yeah, definitely. She wants me to go first in case something happens, at which point I get hurt, and she's just like, Welp, better him than me. Ugh, fine. Junpei muttered to himself and pushed open the iron door. His first steps inside were tentative and careful. But as he examined the room, it became clear that there was no imminent danger. Lotus followed him in, and Clover brought up the rear. The room they found themselves in was divided into two separate areas by a curved wall. A thick glass window built into, what that, into that wall made it impossible to see into the other side of the division. You know, I think the window looks into another room. Maybe it's for monitoring something. Yeah, seems like. Junpei walked to the window and looked through. What the hell? He wasn't sure what else to say. Yeah, definitely monitoring. In the center of the room, shaped like a quarter circle, a mannequin lay on what looked like a medical exam table. Ugh, it looks so creepy. Junpei jumped a little. He hadn't noticed Lotus come up next to him. It's kind of like that doll is waiting for surgery. This is a laboratory, right? I'd say it's more like it's waiting to be experimented on. Maybe. Ooh, uh. It's creepy either way. Yeah. Don't think that thing's gonna suddenly sit up or something, do you? Well, I don't know. I mean, look at all those cables sticking out of it. Yeah. If we press the wrong button, I don't know. <sighs> Stop it. Just thinking about it is terrifying. She was gripping her arms, the knuckles of her hands white. Wait, where's Clover? Yeah, that's a good question. Clover, are you, like, checking this out? She was still standing near the entrance of the room. Oh, of course she is. Her face had the appearance of calm, but it was drawn and somehow sad. What is she? There was something almost pitiful about her. 
Junpei walked over to her and, as kindly as he could, spoke. Are you okay? Clover looked away. What are you talking about? What? I'm just worried about you. Yeah, that's... I'm just checking in, seeing how you're doing. Like, obviously, I know you're not okay, okay. But I want to know if you're at least holding up all right. You've been real quiet. What? I can't be quiet if I want to? Well, I mean, of course you can. I, I just... Now you're just being contrary for the sake of being contrary. Okay, then. If I can be quiet if I want, just leave me alone, okay? Come on, you know I can't do that. Exactly. We gotta work together. Yeah, everybody must contribute. Clover bit her lip and was silent for a moment Junpei, when suddenly... You just don't get it! Her cry took Junpei by surprise and he stumbled backwards a few steps, alarmed. My brother's not the kind of person who just leave me behind! Uh, I didn't say he did. Something happened to him! Yeah, I mean, I get where you're coming from, but nobody said he up and abandoned us. Something... something bad. And I know you're worried about him, but we need to get out of here so that we can keep looking for him. Yeah. Junpei had nothing to say. Lotus, jolted from her mannequin nightmares by Clover's voice, turned towards them. What happened? Clover's eyes slid to Lotus, then back to Junpei. Look, just don't bother me, okay? Leave me alone. Finished, she turned around. Before Junpei or Lotus could say anything, Clover had begun walking away quickly. Hey, wait, Clover! Hold on! That way is- I told you to leave me alone! He might as well have been talking to a wall for all the notice she took of his cries. Not even slowing down, she made for a doorway cut in the wall in front of her. Without even slowing down, she passed through the doorway. Clover, watch out above you! Oh boy. And without warning, an iron gate fell from the ceiling like a portcullis, sealing Clover in.